Today, let's talk hacks. I made two new swimsuits and I'm going to walk you through how you can hack your own. I'm Maddie with Maddie Sews and welcome back. I'm actually going to be talking to all of you about two new swimsuits that I just recently made. Both of these swimsuits were actually made using the same cut lines. Um, well, basically a hack that I used for the Minute Mayo, but really this hack can be done to any one piece swimsuit. It's pretty simple and it just goes to show you that a little bit of creativity and you could end up with different looks, even with the same pattern pieces. By the way, if you're interested in just sewing up a basic one piece, check out this video here. First, let's talk pattern pieces, right? So I went ahead and I took the Minute Mayo, which is made by Patterns for Pirates. And really the only reason why I use this one is because I know that this one piece already fits me and that it would be easy to do hacks from. So I took that pattern and I basically traced it all out on a piece of wrapping paper. Wrapping paper, I use wrapping paper. <laughs> But really use any one piece pattern that you would like to use so for the front and guys I'm, I'm not an artist okay so like bear with me here for the front this is what I had right so this is my swimsuit pattern these are supposed to be legs not flippers I knew that I wanted to cut this a little asymmetric on the top right and like get that little triangle cut out here but what I was actually really mindful about doing was making sure that this top line right here hit underneath my breast. And so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't catching any under boob, like in the actual mesh area or in the twist area, right? So make sure that you have the coverage. I also knew that for the, for the zebra one, I wanted to use the shelf bra too, to give myself a little support. But I didn't do that with this tropical one because it's really just kind of a bunch of different pieces. So I knew that I was gonna add the shelf bra for additional support on the zebra one with the mesh, but not so much with the other. This piece right here is the piece that's really gonna add the interest, right? But we have to make sure that when you cut that out, you're adding seam allowance to both this triangle piece, to the top piece, and to this bottom piece, because we're gonna have to put elastic around all of those edges. So that's something to keep in mind. After you've got the one drawn up, I recommend that you go in and you draw the second. That's supposed to be my butt, you all. <laughs> so, okay. Um, and you can see here that I actually mirrored this piece because I want these two pieces to really kind of hit each other. So let's see. So that way, when it's on your body, it's going to be identical. This is not to scale, but really what I did was I took that triangle piece from the front, I laid it over the back, matching up where it would have connected to the front and just trace that triangle right on there. Make sure again that you add your seam allowances. I like a 3 8 seam allowance to sew swimwear with, but you can use a quarter inch seam allowance too if you're totally comfortable doing that. Now you should have all of your pattern pieces. For the zebra and mesh one, you should have your top part, your bottom part, and the cutout triangle area, right? We're not gonna use that pattern piece. We're just gonna leave that off. And then you're also going to need the entire front and back pattern cut out in your mesh. And if you're going to use the shelf bra, make sure that that's all cut out. I like to line my shelf bras and my front pieces of swimsuits when I can with power mesh or power net um, to give me more of a smoothing effect. So for this one, I used a power mesh that I had picked up from Joann's. It's not as sturdy as some power nets out there, um, but I think it really does look cute in this swimsuit. Now for the back, I used a power net because the entire top portion here is just the mesh. You see that? And this black mesh right here just is not supported enough. So for this swimsuit, I actually went through and just cut the entire back out in that power net, which is a skin tone colored. 
and you can see there what it looks like. There's the front that you can see that was cut out entirely of mesh. After you have your front and back pieces cut out, for this one, I mean, it's really just a matter of top stitching on the additional pieces. So you can see I top stitched on the black bottoms here using a zigzag stitch. I actually did the same thing at the top. Let's talk zigzag stitches here, um, especially with this top stitching because I was popping stitches all over the place. I mean, the minute I put this put this thing on, it was like pop, 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 pop. I was snap crackling popping all around the house. And when I went back and looked in the mirror, you can see where all of the top stitching had broken and my bathing suit was compromised, right? So that actually prompted me to go back to the sewing machine to fix it. Let's talk about what actually was going on there. When I originally sewed up, these seams around the waist, they're smaller than my hips are, right? And so when I actually went to stretch this swimsuit over my hips, the there just wasn't enough give in the thread in this zigzag stitch. Okay, so originally I used this zigzag stitch that looked like this. It was three high and two long, right? But when it was stretched out, it just wasn't giving me enough. Well, it just wasn't stretching enough to be able to accommodate the amount that I needed it to move <laughs> to get over my hips. So what I did was, and after a lot of different zigzag stitch testing. So what I ended up going with was this one, which was five by 1.8. And this one has the amount of give that I need in order to get the swimsuit on and off without threads popping. So if you're making a swimsuit, make sure that you're testing that zigzag stitch to ensure that it will actually just stretch the amount that you need to get over your body parts. I have larger hips, so that was my biggest concern, but if your biggest concern is around your bust or other areas, just test it around there to make sure that everything is going to fit without your stitches popping. After top stitching all of the pieces onto the mesh, I just went ahead and sewed it up like it was a regular one piece swimsuit and it came together really quickly. By the way, the majority of this fabric I picked up from Joann's. This is a rayon jersey knit. It's 90% rayon, 10% spandex. Um, the mesh I also picked up from them. I'll be sure to try to link to them in the description box below if you're interested in them. The power net, I'm pretty certain I had picked up off of fabric.com. If I find something similar or if I still carry this, I'll link to that as well. Oh, and by the way, if you learned a thing or two, why not give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell so that way you know the next time that there's a new video. Now let's talk about this fun shaped one, shall we? <laughs> this tropical swimsuit was actually made using some athletic knit that I had picked up from House of Mami Wata online. It's no longer available, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, ch I checked to see if I could get more of it and it's just not available. But she does have other similar styles. So I'll link to her website in case you're interested in checking that out. So this swimsuit does use the same exact cut lines as the previous one. The biggest difference is, is that this one doesn't have any mesh that we're top stitching onto, right? I did use mesh inside the front part of the top here and I lined it as well. So the mesh is sandwiched in between. I added elastic down at the very bottom here. It's black, but you can see it there. Here's the triangle pieces and we'll get to this in a second. And then here's my bottoms. And really these bottoms are fully lined and they have the elastic around the waist. So that way they don't go anywhere, right? <laughs> because this athletic knit is much lighter, I did decide to put mesh throughout the entire bottom and the front piece here. Um, so that's something that I knew would be my preference. So I went ahead and did it. To make this swimsuit, what you wanna do is make that top piece 
fully elastics and all go ahead and make a completed top make a completed bottom and then you attach this piece to all of that i did manipulate this piece to make it wider so that it could be gathered in on both sides here and the way that i did that was i took my pattern piece and i cut Cut it into strips like this, making sure not to go through the other end. <laughs> this thing is so much fun. After I had it taped to a piece of paper, what I went ahead and did was I started separating each of these pieces so that they were one inch apart. So I would measure one inch in between both of these and tape down the next piece. So after it's all taped down, this is what you have. You have your one inch pieces in between, right? So connect all of those lines and then you cut this out. So this is what the new pattern piece looks like right here. And let me tell you, in hindsight, I wish that I had separated each of these probably by an inch and a half or even two inches. So that way I had more gathers. So you decide the look that you want. Do you want it minimally gathered like this or do you want it heavily gathered like that and adjust the width in between these accordingly. Now you need to do the same thing to this side because we're gathering both ends. So... Cut this one into strips. If you cut them evenly, that's even better. I would suggest drawing the lines on there, but here we go. It's now cut into strips on this end and we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're going to tape it to paper and then we're gonna separate it. So that's what it looks like when it's all separated out on the smaller end. Now, cut it out, connect those lines and cut it out. This is what the new piece is going to look like for that center piece. And then really at this point, all you need to do is cut two of these out in fabric, sew them up at the two different edges, gather those edges, and then I attached a piece of elastic on both sides here, just to kind of like stabilize those seams a bit. So now that you have your tube constructed, what you're gonna wanna do is attach some elastic. Now for this one, what I did was I measured the circumference of the tube and I cut elastic that was 20% shorter than the actual tube. Flip that elastic in and that's gonna help keep that middle section in place and keep it from kind of like turning out so that way you can't see the wrong side of your fabric. So now we need to connect this to our swimsuit, right? And really, all I did was I took my tube and I sewed, I zigzag stitched it right in place right here along that side seam line. Well, going in the other direction of the seam line, but you can see how I attached it right there. So that's the front. You can see I attached it right over onto that elastic right there. And I did that for both the tops and the bottom piece. I just attached it with a zigzag stitch. You just zigzag it, attach it, and you are ready to go. So that's how I actually made this swimsuit right here. And I hope that it wasn't confusing being that I kind of talked you through the entire process. But if it was and you'd like to see a tutorial, just leave it in the comments below and let me know which one you'd like me to do. And I'll try to make that happen for you. If you're thinking about making a swimsuit yourself, sewing it up, I actually have an entire series that I've been doing and I'm gonna follow this up with some tips and tricks. So make sure that you watch the playlist over here so that way you can follow my entire swimsuit making journey and pick up some good tips for yourself. And until next time, I hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day. Bye.